In my last couple of videos I've described lots of projects involving clocks, but I got some comments afterwards that I never really explained how to calibrate those clocks to say the correct time, how to keep them accurate or synchronise them with an internet time server. And that was never really my intention. I was trying to do silly, playful things with clocks rather than made something that actually was an accurate timepiece. But seeing as I had all the components anyway, I thought I would address some of those questions in this video. So here's a PCB I made. On the back you can see a BKA30D stepper motor and a Wemos D1 Mini that's controlling it. Now this is a dual shaft stepper motor attached to both the hour and minute hands. And there's also this RPR220 infrared sensor, and we're going to use this to calibrate the position of the hands. But before I demonstrate that, if you just notice the clock on my laptop, it's currently 4.37. So now I'm going to reset the Wemos and let it run its calibration. The first thing it does is to sweep the hour hand around and then the minute, and as they rotate it detects when they pass in front of the IR sensor. And so we now know the clock says 12 o'clock. Next it connects to my network using the built-in Wi-Fi and it makes a request to an internet time server to access the current time, 437, and it then moves the hands the appropriate number of steps. So this is the code that's running on the Wemos D1 Mini, and this is the block of code that performs the calibration I just showed you. So to start with it checks that the sensor is not initially blocked, and then it first calibrates the hour hand before moving that out the way, and then calibrating the minute hand. Now I'm operating the motors in partial step mode, which means it takes 1080 steps to rotate a hand all the way around the clock face, but there might be several steps during that rotation where the hand is in front of the sensor. So in the calibrate hand function I record the first step at which the sensor is obstructed, and then continue rotating the hand to find the last step. And then I calculate the midpoint between those two as the point where the middle of the hand is directly lined up with the middle of the sensor. Now I'm using the Axel Stepper library for controlling the motors, which is a library for complete motor control. It keeps track of current position, target position, acceleration, maximum speed, loads of values which, to be honest, are not necessarily required for this project because we're only ever moving in discrete steps. But I'm in the habit of using it anyway. So we've got two motors, and each of those motors has got two coils, so that's a total of eight contacts. But looking at the data sheet, contacts two and three of each motor are always driven in phase with each other. So we actually only need six GPIO pins on the Wemos. And this code here defines a table showing the sequence in which those pins need to be driven high or low to make each hand move forwards or backwards. The rest of the code is just about establishing a Wi-Fi connection and making a request to the time server. You don't actually need to maintain that connection continuously. Once you've set the Wemos to the correct time once, you can then use the built-in RTC to maintain that correct time and just check in every now and again to see if any adjustments need to be made. But I'll upload this code to my GitHub account along with the Gerber files for the PCB if you want to use it yourself. Now, if you just want to have an accurate functioning clock, there are probably significantly easier and cheaper ways to do it using one of the quartz mechanisms I showed in my previous video. But if you want to create a playful project using a clock, but also want to have the option of it saying the correct time, this project gives you everything you need to integrate to be able to do that.